stress is probably the one of the number one inhibitors when it comes to people losing weight. Because when you're stressed, your cortisol levels are up. And when your cortisol levels are up, guess what else is up? Your insulin levels. And when your insulin levels are up, guess what happens? Your body is going to store calories as fat. So managing stress and losing weight can be a challenge, but it can be done. And just with my weight loss journey and everything I've gone through, I lost weight in a very stressful situation. I was dealing with chronic pain. I was dealing with issues in my home life. I was dealing with, you know, serious issues around me and I was able to do it. But things have transitioned where you're dealing with the other stress. Major stresses that people struggle with is work-life balance. I believe it was Korea, South Korea, has started an experiment with a four-day work week because they want people to balance their work-life balance. And they also want people to have more kids. Well, that's a different situation because Korea is having a very negative birth rate. But I digress. They're going in the right direction when it comes to the work-life balance. And so many people are stressed at work. People, it might not manifest as gaining weight, but for other people will manifest as physical pain, as pain, you know, in their back, in their shoulders, in their hips, in their knees. These are things I see with people I work with one-on-one -on -one as a personal trainer. And it's something I really want to help people with. But mental health is, <laughs> it's everything. And if you lose your mental health, you lose everything. So in this video, I just want to have like an honest discussion about mental health, weight loss, and the whole lot. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Diela Joy and I made this transformation on my weight loss journey. I lost the majority of my weight eating in a one meal a day fasting schedule, which was basically fasting for 20 hours a day and eating within a four hour eating window. Some days I would eat within a one hour eating window and fast for 20 to 23 hours in a day. I just want to talk about transitioning into the work-life balance and keeping up with your weight loss and keeping up with your health overall. A lot of people will gain weight when they're stressed. Some people will lose weight when they're stressed. So this video is out for both people who lose weight, don't maintain weight, and people who are, you know, struggle with maintaining their weight, period. It could be overweight or underweight, gaining weight or what have you. And I think this is key. You need to make time for yourself. You need to schedule in time for yourself. I think the best way for most people who are busy working is to make sure you get in that workout before you start work. You get in that workout first thing in the morning. You need to make sure you schedule time for you. You schedule time for everyone else. You schedule time for work. You schedule time for your partner. You may schedule time for your kids. If you have kids or not, you may schedule time you know, to do this or that, make sure you schedule time for you. You would be surprised how much time we waste in a day scrolling on social media, watching endless garbage that does not fulfill or assist in improving ourselves as humans. So there is always time in the day. So look at your cell phone usage, look at your scrollage usage. I'm sure it will say you've been on your phone for hours when you can at least convert one of those hours to maybe taking care of you whether it be going to the gym. This morning I went to the pool because the gym and I are kind of not friends right now. We're gonna be swimming a lot. Um, <laughs> I made time to go to the pool. Um, maybe make time to meditate. So this is key. Schedule in your self-care. You should be working out four to five times a week. If you can't get in that much, at least get in three. Get in something. One workout or a small workout is better than no workout. Number two, where people suffer is, is sleep. When we don't get enough sleep, who we go to crap. And I've seen it too many times when people don't get enough sleep. People tend to be ruder. People tend to be less considerate. Um, people just tend to overeat. So please make sure you're getting in enough sleep. And I'm talking to myself here. If you gotta go to bed at 8 p.m., go to bed at 8 p.m. because sleep is so important. That's where our body literally heals. That's where weight loss happens. Weight loss happens in our sleep. That's where we, we recover. That's where we get all the health benefits. It's been said that lack of sleep can be a predictor in having an early life. So 
please make sure you're getting in that sleep. If you can't, maybe schedule a nap throughout the day. Sleep is so important because it's going to affect you on multiple levels. Number three, Make sure you are scheduling time for your mental health. Make sure you're scheduling time to unplug. And this is something I'm speaking to myself here. I know seeing a therapist is very expensive. I believe my therapist is $250. She's a psychologist. She is amazing. I love her to death. I am just waiting for my benefits to re reschedule. Is that the word? Is to restart to see her more. Because she's been doing EMDR therapy, which has helped me out so much, just reprocessing my trauma. It's very difficult to deal with weight loss when you do have a trauma situation with your brain. People don't understand mental health. People don't understand why and how trauma affects people. People don't get it. Um, some people like to project their traumas onto others, unfortunately. And other people like to destroy themselves. So the key is right here is to taking care of you. Because when you take care of you, you're not going to want to bring other people down. When you take care of you, you're not going to want to bring yourself down. You want to uplift yourself. So getting professional help, there's nothing wrong with that. Problem with that might be finding a good damn therapist. I've had struggle with that. I have a good therapist and I'm so grateful for her and I cannot wait to see her again because girl, I need her so badly to do some EMDR on me right now. But therapy is key. If you don't have access to a therapist, there are workbooks you can get, DBT, CBT. You can get some apps that will help you meditate. Calm is a good app, Headspace. I like Insight Timer. There's stuff for free on YouTube. There's Tara Brock, listen to her talks. You can listen to people like Eckhart Tolle. If you're just bombarding your, your brain with all of this stuff, it will help you combat the ne negative self-talk. Like Les Brown says, that's another person to take to check out as well. And I need to listen to him more often because he really helps me. It takes probably <laughs> 17, it's, it's a number, I forget what number, but 17 positive thoughts to outweigh one negative talk. So if one negative thing could happen to you, it takes like 17 times of positivity to overcome that. Why? Because the human brain was designed to scan for negativity because it's how we survived as humans. It's how we evolved in the hunter and gatherer areas, eras of living in tribal eras because human brain beings, we're constantly being attacked and hunted by animals, by other hominoid species like the Neanderthals, the Denisonians, whatever. So we need to teach our brains to be calm. Take a dopamine reset. Get away from your phone. A dopamine reset fast would be great for that. And what is that? The 48 hour fast. So I'm just gonna talk about real life here. It can be stressful. If you're in a situation where you are stressed and you can't get in your workouts and you're eating like crap, please hang on. Do one little thing to improve yourself, whether it be showing up to the gym, whether it be having a salad for lunch instead of going out and having some processed carbs or some fast food, whether it be bringing down your fast food intake from four times a week to three times a week. Grab onto those small victories and let it snowball into big victories. This is how I was able to make that weight loss transformation. I was addicted to the worst food. I was addicted to sugar, having like sugar every day, literally having like those Cadbury bars, a whole bar daily, having fast food three to four times a week. You can make small incremental changes that add up. Please don't think you gotta go from zero to 100. It can happen. Smart, start with the little things because it's in those little things that it explodes and manifests to the change, the overall, that big change that you see. People think it's about becoming an overnight success. No, it's working on the small things and letting those small things add up, the compound effect. Anyway, I hope this video reached somebody. If you are struggling, never give up. Please know that there's a power within you that's greater than any force that is trying to bring you down outside of you. You are incredibly powerful. You have what it takes to change your life. You have what it takes to make it happen. So go out there and make it happen. If you made it this far into the video, just type in the words, make it happen. And I'm sending you mad love, okay? You got this. Bye.